I'm here with a fresh-faced up-and-comer, new kid on the block. You won't have heard of this guy before, Javier Dominguez. What, like an F&M champion, maybe? Yeah. You've won a thing or two in your time. Whatever. We don't need to. We don't need to labour <laughs> ourselves with this world champion, mythic champion. The trophy case there, my friend. You're gonna have to get an extension. Anyway, <laughs> Gruel Adventures is the name of the game uh, for Mythic Championship Six uh, for you. Let's have a look and uh, and jump into what you're all about here. Played Gruel uh, great success at the last Mythic Championship, uh, winning at the whole thing. But this is a, this is a little different, Javier. Yeah, I mean, the most important card is still Once Upon a Time. Mm -hmm. It is the card that powers the last deck, and this is the card that powers this deck. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, Gruul Mana is not very good. Mm -hmm. I think this is probably the best kind of standard, and I think um, it is like a very good card because it just gives the deck consistency. Okay. And you want to find your important cards and look at the first five cards, you know, increase the chances mm -hmm. so much. And then in Keeper, well, in Keeper is probably one of the most underrated cards, in my opinion, mm -hmm. because I agree. Absolutely. it is I a love this card. cute card. Yep. You can find it out of Once Upon a Time, and you know, it's just a one one that gives you card advantage, mm. which is very powerful. It's what, one of the things that people have pointed out about this card is that it is a value engine that, that starts turning a turn one, or turn two really is when you start drawing cards from it. We don't often see card draw engines like this as cheaply costed. Yeah, it also doesn't, it also doesn't go away. Mm. Like it does a card in turn two, but they ha still have to live with it. Mm. So they have to use their turn three mana to kill the card. Mm. I think it's, yeah, I think it's a very good card, obviously. Absolutely. Love yeah. this card. Absolutely love this card. Anyway, let's move on and have a look at uh, some of the other cards that are going on here, specifically the adventure cards. So you've played your Innkeeper, and now we're looking at starting to draw some cards off it, and uh, and these are the ones you're going to do it with. We've seen Bone Crusher Giant, we've seen Love Struck Beast, we've even seen Rimrock Knight here, but these guys are probably more important because uh, of uh, the adventure side of them this time around. Yeah, definitely. Like, all these cards, they're actually perfectly fine cards. Mm -hmm. The fact that they play well with Innkeeper is what would make the decks possible. I think Rimrock Knight is... Right now, one of my favorite cards mm. in the, the whole Throne of the Rain set. And I think it might be very well the best one of the three. Really? It's a pure play. That is it's a, a combat huge trick. Play. Yeah, it's a very hard to play around it. Yeah. And it just has a lot of applications. Mm. It's also non green, mm. which is very good in the Noxus yes, Blast world. Course, yep. Yeah, I'm just very high on, on Rimrun Knight overall. Yeah, for sure. And of course, yeah, of course, uh, yeah, and it's splitting, good. splitting interaction with uh, Bone Crusher Giant, multiple threats with Love Struck Beast, and uh, you're good to go. Let's move on now and have a look at uh, what else you got cooking up for us here. A little more utility with these cards, although Questing Beast is a, is, a, is a real house, a real threat. Yeah, Questing Beast also has the one to bunch with the Emma Cliff, mm -hmm. which obviously mm -hmm. dominates any board. And Harpooner is a concession, of course, to the, the Gilded Goose. Mm -hmm. I think killing the Gilded Goose is very important uh, for this deck, even after turn two or three or whatever, like even in the late game. Mm -hmm. And it can also trade with the Crisis, because sure. yep. even you know if you, uh, you get some creatures in the graveyard, it's enough. And I think Questing Beast is also very good in this deck, even if it's legendary, because you can play the first one, mm -hmm. while it's going to die, otherwise it's going to really mm -hmm. flip the opponent, and then you play the second one, and even the third one. So you're not feeling uh, too, you're not feeling as though playing four copies of a legendary card is a bit of a liability, just because this is a must-answer threat. So a second copy isn't really dead, because your opponent's going to be dead before they are. Yeah, Vigil also Vigilance, that touch means, like, if they don't want to trade with you, they have to take the damage and also not attack you. Yeah. So it's all good, yeah. yeah. And obviously, yeah, doing, doing a whole lot of work here. So this is the creatures. Let's have a look at uh, some of the other stuff going on here, uh, more specifically. I guess I guess the interaction? I mean, Embercleave yeah. is kind of interaction if you like to interact with the, the opponent's life total. It's, uh, it's doing <laughs> a lot of work there. We'll come back to the Embercleave in a second. Domri's Ambush, a, uh, a powerful removal spell. Your creatures are generally going to be bigger than theirs. And Veil vale of Summer, of course. I mean, in a counterspell heavy uh, format, it's, it's going to do a lot of work. But, but why are you playing this list? Uh, why are you playing it in this list here as a one off? Well, I think the trick with Veil of Summer comes in the fact that playing well against Embercleave mm -hmm. means playing wrong against Veil of Summer. So we put the, my opponent, I want to put my opponent in a position where they don't know what to play again, like right. what to play around. Mm -hmm. Because there's no way to play around both cards. Like because 70 removal for the combat step for Emmercleave mm -hmm. makes it so you run into Battle of Summer. Mm -hmm. That's why I like this split. Sure, so, so these cards actually, on the face of it, don't have too much to do with each other, but you, you're kind of putting your opponent in a tough spot. They've got to play one, around one or the other and they can't play Yeah, also if you ever draw this two together, it's just like, no. you know, just how safely can, put the Ember Cleave lose, in. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> now, of course, Ember Cleave, uh, you know, one of the marquee cards of the deck that won you the last Mythic Championship. You're going to run it back with uh, with uh, Eldrain's Excalibur here. Talk to us about this card. You're, you're obviously still a big fan. Yeah, I mean, I've just obviously at this point, I just love the card. Mm -hmm. I think it's very good. I think it's one of the most important pieces to be the food decks. Mm -hmm. And the fact that it makes any single creature a massive threat, like mm -hmm. even a Rimrock Knight. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very powerful card. I, I think it 
close. Like it was close to be the fourth copy in the deck too, even though it's legendary. Mm -hmm. But at the end, I think the um, three is enough. Because you want to draw one yeah. all the time. Yeah, but drawing two is not very good. Mm -hmm. So I'm very happy. Yeah, I'm very happy to be able to play McCliff again. Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I, I, I'm, I'm, I bet, man. Look at that. Good to be a card for me forever. <laughs> yeah. 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 I mean, if I told you that you were going to have a favorite card from Throne of Eldraine and that it was going to be red and it was going to have the numbers one and one on it, I don't think you would have picked Embercleave to begin with. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Like, yeah, I would probably say like 10 cards before saying the Embercleave. Yeah. But but, I mean, yeah. yeah, it's doing the work for you. Well, let's have a look at the lands very quickly. This is my actually, this is actually my favorite thing about Simple. this deck. One of the best mana bases I've ever seen. One of the best lands, like just, I love this. Just green, red idiots getting in there and uh, powered out by one of the most honest mana bases you're going to come across <laughs> in standard. I want to say it's like 10, 10, 4, and 4 once upon a time. Because it yes. really helps in the mana base. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that's funny. That, like, like, maybe you can talk to us, a little, before we wrap up, talk to us about that a little bit. This is one of the cleanest mana bases you're ever going to see, but you still feel like you need the once upon a time to support a difficult mana base? That doesn't yeah, make... because you would like to have double green mm -hmm. and ideally double red mm -hmm. on the first four lands, so it's kind of tricky sometimes. You, like, you get three forests in the hand. Right. So that's why I think you need the, the once on a time. Just because we don't have, like, rootbound crag or whatever. Yeah, or exactly. We don't have, like, too many dual lands, so, yeah. I mean, sometimes you, it's going to happen. Mm. So once on a time makes right. it less likely. Well, that's Cruel Adventures. My goodness me, what an exciting deck. And uh, look, you're running back the uh, the big uh, the big red-green idiots, although <laughs> in, definitely in a, uh, in a in a different sort of setting, different style here. But uh, obviously very confident. You didn't uh, register Oko. How are you feeling about uh, Oko's domination of the standard format? Uh, I think it's be the best deck, mm -hmm. for sure. And I thought it was going to register Oko, but mm -hmm. I just kept testing this against Oko, and it just kept performing well, yeah. even against the best players. So. I mean, maybe it's you more than the deck, dude. Did you consider that? Did you I consider... Know, they, they are also, you know... They're also... They're also very good, so yeah. I think the deck is fine in this Oko field. We'll right. see. We will see. We'll find out this week, uh, this weekend here at Mythic Championship uh, Ship 6. Javier Dominguez, thanks so much for your time, Thank and you. that's it from us.